first two slides, you will see that I retained Jennings and Fulton Law Firm in January of 2019 after learning of the notary fraud of Nikki Sakakis bot. They were representing me only in the matter against Linda Na, which was a frivolous case filed to harass and stalk. I also hired them to protect the foundation because I clearly saw that Linda Na, her broker, and Bobby Ante were all going to attack my work to conceal the crimes they committed against me. When I retained Jennings and Fulton in January of 2019, I made it very clear to them that the slander and the defamation was coming from Linda Na Purdue. Here you will see a statement I sent to my counsel in 2019 after they already knew of the legal malpractice and the notary fraud of the defamation that Linda Na was causing me. You can also see on the second page, she refers to me as these people. This is racist and it's very clear that Linda Na has no remorse for anything she has done. Then retained counsel for Bobby Ante through Shumway Van. This is Linda Na Purdue, the realtor from hell. You can see when I retained Jennings and Fulton in February of 2019, I made it very clear that nothing I was posting was defamation and it was all true claims that I provided evidence. They also had clear evidence that Galvar was not acting as they produced the evidence of notary fraud from Shumway Van. I let them know that I intended on filing civil suits against all parties and that the title agent acted as a notary and the escrow agent. So in January and February, I notified Jennings and Fulton of the notary fraud, the legal malpractice of Chris Tillman, and the legal malpractice of Shumway Van. On the left, you will see an email from Linda Na on January 4th, 2018, 11 days before I canceled the purchase. She clearly states that because we are married, we will both sign the deed. She had never any point told me I would not be on the deed of the home and that the home would be solely in Bobby's name. You can see on the second page that Bobby clearly states I did not go to the title company. He did not know I wasn't on the title, therefore could have never told me I was not going to be on the title. It wasn't until Linda Na retained counsel for him through Shumway Van Law Firm that his story started to change and he began to be rewarded for attacking his wife and protecting a title company, a real estate agent, and their brokers. On the left, you will see an email to both attorneys that I hired, Chris Tillman and Jennings and Fulton on March 30th, 2019. I clearly let them know about the legal separation filing that I filed in December. I clearly let them know about the legal malpractice of Linda Na and Bobby Ante using the same lawyers and that they were fabricating evidence. I also let my counsel know that Nikki Sakakis bot did not turn in her journal, which also verifies that she was the escrow agent and the notary. So Jennings and Fulton and Chris Tillman in 2018 and 2019 had very clear evidence of the notary fraud committed against me and the legal malpractice being committed by Shumway Van. If you look up NPRC rule 1.7, it is against the rules for Shumway Van to represent Bobby Ante and Linda Na. I also filed legal malpractice against Shumway Van, and they still, till today, represent both clients and themselves. And Nevada State Bar has done nothing to stop it. On the left, you will see the CD. You will see that the settlement agent was Nikki Sakakis bot. You will see on the right the response from the Nevada Secretary of State dated 12-9-2018, where they also acknowledge that the notary that forged my name to the deed of sale was Nikki Sakakis. That is a prohibited act of NRS 240.065B and the Nevada Secretary of State, Aaron Ford and Governor Sisolak have done nothing to make an arrest against Nikki Sakakis bot. NRS 240.065B 
prohibits any notary from performing any notarial act if they receive any commissions or fees in excess of the notary fee. So Nikki Sakaka Spot collecting escrow agent fees as well as notary fees is a prohibited act and her employer should have been held accountable. On the left, you will see an email to my counsel a month before my trial. This was to Logan Wilson, where I w again went over the violations of the notary laws. He acknowledges that we had a meeting about it, and I let him know that I was entitled to justice for the crimes committed against me. On the right, you'll see in April 2nd, 2020, after the trial, I then tried to locate the notary bond for Nikki Bott. My attorney, Adam Fulton, who was representing me in the Nikki Bot matter and the Linda Na matter, then told me he had no idea where I could find the bond, clearly legal malpractice, and trying to ensure that I got no justice for the crimes committed against me. Adam Fulton collected $12,000 in legal fees, and then you will see he attempted to bill me an additional $18,000 for a trial that should have never taken place. On the left, you will see the legal malpractice of Jennings and Fulton and Logan Wilson. I found the bond on my own and filed with Liberty Mutual to collect the $10,000 bond. I then told Logan Wilson that I was not going to take any settlement and that I was going to get my due process. I asked them on May 20th to withdraw from all of my cases and that I would begin filing into them on my own and ensuring that I got justice. The following day, May 21st, 2020, I then let Adam Fulton know that I was entitled to my due process and that I was not going to be bullied by opposing counsel and I wanted to collect the bond. As my attorney, he should have been collecting the bond from Liberty Mutual. Instead, he was trying to force me into a $5,000 settlement when the penalty for forgery alone is $10,000. Here you will see, according to Nevada law, that the title company and the notary were liable for the misconduct. Each count of fraud was a $2,000 violation, yet my attorneys were trying to force me into a settlement for $5,000 and litigate the home as community property. Here you're looking at Raina Hughes' fabricated opinion of the court. This came out the day after I fired my counsel. And you can see on the first page, she admits there was no jury at my trial. There was no witnesses at my trial. On the second page provided of this ruling, you will see that she says I was at the title company. If you go to Bobby's message in the beginning of this video, he clearly stated I was not at the title company. Rainy Hughes fabricated this order to protect the brokers and the real estate agent. If you would like to see the full fabricated opinion of the court, there's another YouTube video that will go over the entire fabrication that Rainy Hughes came up with after the case was transferred to her by Kathy Hardcastle. After Rainy Hughes fabricated her opinion of the court on May 22, 2020, to simply help the bond company deny the bond payment of the notary, I then obtained a court-certified, board-certified forensic handwriting expert. And on May 30th, 2020, he confirmed that my name was forged to the deed of sale. And not only was it forged, it was also a prohibited act. So they had very clear evidence that Nikki Sakaka's bot should have been arrested. After refusing to change her opinion of the court and obtaining a letter from an expert, she then put in a minute order with no hearing in chambers on July 23rd, 2020. She admits here in the bottom that I filed for a new trial and attorney fees while my attorneys are still on record. She never took the hearing, then rescheduled the hearing for another day. You can see on the right that she said she was rescheduling them for August 4th. After Jennings and Fulton finally removed themselves from my case in June of 2020, 
I then went into the county recorder's office and filed for lease pendants on my house. I also filed a homestead and requested to speak to the county recorder so I could report the notary fraud and she could revoke the deed. The following slide, you will hear the conversation between me and the county recorder on August 3rd, 2020. She threatens me to call the police and then contacts Raina Hughes and tells her that I'm trying to quiet the title of my home. Notice here that the electronic court stamp reads 8-3-2020. This is when I went into the county recorder's office, filed a homestead, and also filed for lease pendants on my house to quiet the title. I then spoke to the county recorder. So I did everything in my power to make sure that I protected my home. Okay, so you're saying that an escrow agent can notarize her own file and that's a valid document for you? That's not what we said. We said after your case is over, that the attorney will make a judgment call as to whether or not the document will be expunged. That's not how it works. And you did say that the attorney looked over the documents and he said they looked fine, correct? Whatever was said in the email to you is what we stand by. I'm, I'm asking you now, what did he say looked fine? I'm not going to discuss that with you. You should have the email and the email. I do, and so does the bar, and we need your attorney's information that gave, that said this. The bar is Because not you can't you. notarize your own documents. Okay, I'm not going to argue with you today. You might want to read this before you say anything else. It doesn't matter. You're re being recorded as well. You may want to read it before you say anything else. I'm not, in, I'm not intimidating you. I'm asking you to do your job, ma'am. That's all. It's not a hard job. You be honest, you follow the laws, you follow the rules. That's all I'm asking you to do. Okay, I'm done. <clears throat> We're not gonna have this discussion today. So an, an, an escrow agent is allowed to notarize their own file? You must leave the office now. Um, okay. It was so nice talking to you, thank you. On 8-5, after hearing no motions filed since May of 2020, Raina Hughes took ex parte communications from the county recorder, Deborah, Deborah Conway, in which she then put in this fabricated final decree of divorce stamped 8-5-2020. Therefore, I had already filed other cases pertaining to the home and also filed lease pendants on my house prior to the order. Therefore, Raina Hughes had no jurisdiction over this matter to force a sale of the home. You will also notice on this final decree of divorce on the last page on the right, there is no court stamp. Raina Hughes did not stamp this final decree of divorce until, 20, until November of 2021, forcing me from August of 2020 to November of 2021 to remain with Bobby Auntie's last name, remain in the home, and get no justice for the crimes committed against me. After Raina Hughes fabricates her final decree of divorce, I then file for lease pendants, a homestead, and file into the cases filed by Jennings and Fulton on my own. I request lease pendants to quiet the title of my home, and I request that they enforce the notary bond. With no hearing, three days after I filed to for lease pendants, the judge then puts in an order denying lease pendants and denying amendment to the complaint filed by my attorneys who committed legal malpractice. This was done in chambers and there was never a hearing held in the matter of Nikki Sakakis bot. After obtaining a handwriting expert to confirm my name was forged in addition to the notary fraud, Raina Hughes then refused to hear anything I filed into the case. Even though I was still being represented by Jennings and Fulton, they refused to do anything to change the order. Raina Hughes then held a hearing over the phone in September of in October of 2020, in which she again refused to acknowledge that she concealed the legal separation filing, that she was not the judge on this case, and that she refused to change anything in her order. She then lost her seat and D. Butler took over refusing to report any of this misconduct. 
So even though a trial took place with no jury, no witnesses over a deed that wasn't valid, Nevada's Supreme Court forced me to file an appeal. Even though Raina Hughes had very clear evidence and could have corrected her ruling prior to me having to file an appeal that has sat at the Nevada Supreme Court now for two years in which they refused to change anything in the order. So now I've been waiting 30 minutes for Raina Hughes to get on the phone and she still hasn't got on the phone. So hopefully soon and we'll see if she decides to follow the law at all. Can you hear me? No, no, I'm on mute, waiting for her to get on the phone if she ever does. And I'm suing this lawyer. So how he's defending Bobby still, I, I'm confused. Mm. Oh, the guy, the guy is talking is the lawyer? Yeah, that's his lawyer, his dirty lawyer. Mm that they took my evidence out. They already knew the deed wasn't even valid and still filed these cases. And he's still coming on. Yeah. Defending him. Yeah. Acting like it's, it's community property and it's still his house. And he wants $40,000 in legal fees for doing it. So I'm gonna laugh my ass off if she gives him money for litigating a case that wasn't valid and then taking my evidence out, harassing me, stalking me. This is what they've been doing for three years. Very specific with them and non-emotional. Oh, you'll see. If she ever gets on the phone, they'll never even. They'll Good never afternoon. Even Good afternoon, Your Honor. We are on the record in the case of Antique, case number D five seven three one five four. Uh, do I have Lucy Lakari, formerly known as Auntie, present? Yes, yes, I am. Defendant? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Grayson Moulton, bar number 14587, on behalf of Defendant Bobby Yancey, who is present with me. Okay, thank you. So the matters on for today are the defendant's motion for attorney fees, the plaintiff's opposition to that motion, and the defendant's reply. I also have numerous motions by the plaintiff. Motion for reconsideration. A motion to enforce or for an order to show cause. A motion for stay of execution of the decree. Those have been opposed uh, by the defendant. And I believe he has a counter motion to enforce the decree. And so I've read all of the papers that are on file. Okay. Um, this matter was appealed in August of 2020, but there's been no bond filed to stay. I've already the filed the bond. Of the final order. I've already filed it. There has to be a, a, a motion for stay and a bond filed. Ms. Lakari. Ma'am, I filed the bond and the motion to stay already, and the Supreme Court already has all this information. Um, okay, so tell me where I can find that bond. Um, I've already paid the bond twice, and I've sent it to the district court, which is why it's at Supreme Court now, for a deed that was invalid. Okay, so Mr. Moulton, have you seen a supersedious bond? I, I have not seen any supersedious bond, Your Honor, and there is not one reflected on the on the record and the cause of action. So I do not believe that one has ever been issued. Your Honor, I'd like to also I'd like to also let you. Ms. Lakari, um, this is Judge Hughes. You do have to file it in this case, and I reviewed the record of this case, and 
and there is a, uh, no record of you filing a superseded bond. Your Honor, I've already paid $500 twice in bond fees, and I have the receipts with me. So the $500 that you paid to the Supreme Court is for the appeal. That's not a superseded bond. Do you realize that this is not a valid transaction? The notary notarized her own document. Mr. Ante was part of the fraud. So why did we litigate for three years over a, a, a deed that was invalid that I submitted to you in December of 2018? Well, Your Honor, we should have never got to a supersedis bond if you would have reviewed the paperwork in December of 2018 when I filed the motion for re for legal separation, which informed you of the mortgage fraud. So we had a trial and the court made findings of fact and conclusions of law. You removed my evidence trial. out of the trial binder. I have open litigation against Shumway Van. You're still allowing them to litigate cases, and I've informed you of all of this. Well, that's incorrect, Ms. Lakari. I didn't remove anything from your trial binder. At the trial, you allowed them to remove 301 pages, 65 exhibits that contradicts everything you wrote in your ruling that you already reviewed in December of 2018 when I filed for legal separation when I found out the fraud occurred. So I'm very confused why you're doing this to me. I'm not a bad person. I have taken advantage of nobody. I married a freaking idiot and that was it. And you guys have tried to cover this up for three years and have allowed malpractice. Ms. Lafari, you won't call anybody a name. I didn't call anybody a name. I know that you enjoy doing that and that you've taken social media and called a lot of people names, but I won't allow that in court. You allowed it in court. You allowed her to call me an opportunist and a liar in your courtroom when you knew that deed was not valid. That, that's incorrect, Ms. Lafari. If she notarized her own document, it's not a valid deed, correct? And you have that information. I've already made findings of fact. Okay, so then I'll go to Supreme Court and why are we having this hearing? Because it's no longer in your court. no stay of enforcement of the final order. That's what I'm trying to point out to you. Oh, I filed a stay to the Supreme Court and I filed a stay to you that you've ignored. Can you please recuse yourself and we can end this call? For reconsideration and your motion for order to show cause lacks legal authority and basis. You see the legal yeah. malpractice and you're allowing it. A lot of grievances against your attorney, but those aren't grounds for the court to reconsider its ruling because the court... You are part of the fraud, Raina Hughes. You, you are been part been of it. Moderator. So Press no wonder... To unmute yourself. There's a list. I'm not even dealing with you it. Can't do this. I'm not dealing with them. I'm not. It's no longer in her court. Okay, but Lindsay, Lindsay. After Rena Hughes refused to hear anything that I filed for over five months, lost her seat to D. Butler, I was then forced to file an appeal. Through the appeal, I had already notified Christina Pickering, Supreme Court judge, of the misconduct of Raina Hughes. Instead of her taking any action, they ignored all evidence submitted to them, and my appeal has sat at Nevada Supreme Court for two years, in which they have now released possession of my home to Bobby Ante. This case appeal statement was submitted on August 5th, 2020. They had plenty of evidence just in the case appeal statement and through the register of actions to verify everything that I was saying was true. And I was entitled to a new hearing and a new trial and a criminal lawyer. After Rainey Hughes refused to correct her order, refused to hear anything about this matter, I then contacted the Supreme Court in which I was again set with Christina Pickering. She denies my motion to stay, even though I have a letter from an expert and very clear fraud of Kathy Hardcastle, Rainey Hughes, Jennings and Fulton, and Shumway Van. I then again in November asked her to correct the order in which she again denies correcting the order and allows the abuse to continue. This abuse has now continued for two years as everyone tries to conceal the misconduct of Rainey Hughes, Kathy Hardcastle, Christina Pickering, and the rest of the Nevada Supreme Court. You can see from the email on the left from Logan Wilson that 
Jennings and Fulton were still representing me in multiple matters in June of 2020. This was two months after the fabricated opinion of the court of Rainey Hughes and also after I received a letter from an expert. Yet they were still representing me in national title matter and took no action to ensure I got justice. On the right, you will see I was not copied on any filings that they sent. I had to then request from them copies of everything that they filed during their year of representation into all three cases. This was the email sent to my counsel in June of 2020. When I learned that they were not representing me and they were conspiring with opposing counsel. I then addressed the fact that they took the legal separation filing out, which was exhibit six of the trial binder. They never suggested a handwriting expert and they never reported the legal malpractice of Shumway Van or the notary fraud of Nikki Sakakis bot. Yet Nevada State Bar has taken no action and Aaron Ford has done nothing but protect the judges, the lawyers and the government workers who failed to do their jobs.